All right, so um, we are going to do something a little bit different this morning. And Sarah had mentioned that we have a new curriculum. And she's been amazing, by the way. Um, just, I think she just finished up preparing for Easter, which I still thought it was 2018. And she's already done preparing for Easter. But she's got all this stuff, and, and she's done a great job with this curriculum. It is all the way, it runs all the way through middle school, and I teach middle school, and it is awesome because I just come in, she gets my stuff on my desk a week before I need it, and just makes everything easy to just go in and teach the middle schoolers, and, and that's what she'll do for you too if you want to teach the little, little kids during um, uh, the summer break. She makes it really easy on you to just be able to enjoy the experience, and to me that's huge. And so thank you, Sarah, for all you do. Um, it, it, it's just great having her around. It's great seeing what she's doing. And she's innovating. And she's working hard. And this is part of that. It's a series called Made. And I'm doing it in middle school as well. And, and so we're going to give you a little, a little taste of what the kids get uh, every, every uh, Sunday morning. They, there's videos even. So you don't even have to. They, they actually teach it for you. Uh, in a lot of ways. We're just going to watch one of the intro videos here in just a minute, and so you get a little glimpse, and I'll come back up, and, and I'll teach you, and you'll probably wish that you got to see the rest of the video. So, anyway, if you guys can go play that video. Individuality. Oh, individuality is discovering who you are meant to be. Maybe I'm meant to be a sculptor. <laughs> I know I have more than one ear. <laughs> Whew. Okay. Got to stand for a second. <laughs> going to be a one-of-a-kind self-sculpture. You know how I know that? Because I am one-of-a-kind. I am the only person in this universe who looks exactly like me and thinks exactly like me and talks and acts exactly like me. God made me unique and God made me for a purpose and that purpose is right here. Hello. This is me I'm looking for. For. I mean, it's like I'm looking in the mirror. Can you tell which one's the real me? Can you? <laughs> oh, who am I kidding? Uh, and this thing doesn't look anything like me. I'm not going to be a sculptor. I'm no designer. I'm, I'm no good at bricklaying or, or, or building knob straps. There's got to be a way to figure out what my purpose is. Maybe today's story will help me. What are you looking at? <laughs> All right, so what happens in, in, in Kidstown is you have that, that's the intro video, then you have the teaching portion, and then there's a, the ending video where he kind of sums everything up, and it's just a, it's a great curriculum, and it, it gives you all the tools that you need, and our kids are getting just a, a, a huge dose every single week of who Jesus is, and uh, I'm just so happy to be a part of a church that has the emphasis on the kids the way we do. And, and to see that week in and week out throughout every level and, and every age group is just, it's just huge. It, it is the most important thing that we do. I mean, we're already almost halfway dead. I don't know if you noticed or not. But our, our kids, man, they're, they're the future of this thing and they're the future of, uh, of, of the gospel and we need to pass that on and they're doing a great job doing that today. And I've got Penelope, Olive, and Francie back here behind me today. And, and we're talking about you being uniquely made. And they're actually painting um, as I'm going to be speaking, which I feel like is a lot of pressure because I have to speak eloquently enough to inspire artists. 
So I told him it's probably just going to be a couple of dead trees or a skeleton or something by the time they're done, but um, we'll see what happens. And uh, I wanted to move down because I didn't want there to be a smiley face in the back of my head that I didn't know about after it's all said and done is. So anyway, they're going to be up there painting. We're going to be talking about the love of God. We're going to be talking about the love of God and how we're uniquely made. Um, there's a story in Scripture. I don't know if I can jump it ahead. It's not working. All right. So, uh, so there's a story in Scripture and it's in Matthew chapter 22. And Jesus is there and the Pharisees are talking to him. And the Sadducees had just talked to him and he kind of uh, uh, shot them down. And they, they, they were asking questions about the resurrection. They didn't even believe in the resurrection. And Jesus handled that beautifully. And then this lawyer, I don't know, is Pete here? <laughs> Pete. Uh, that there's this lawyer, he actually was an expert in the law. This guy who was an expert in the law, he was a Pharisee. He comes up to Jesus and he asks him a question. He says this, he says, hearing that Jesus had silenced the Sadducees, the Pharisees got together. One of them, an expert in the law, te tested him with this, this question. Teacher, which is the greatest commandment in the law? Of all the law. And the Pharisees believed there were exactly 613 commandments in the law. They, they believed that was the exact official canonical amount of commandments. That there were 613. And so they're thinking they're going to trap Jesus. And they say, which one is the greatest of all the commandments? And that's a, that's a pretty big question. And Jesus came back and replied with this. Jesus replied, Love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul. Love Him with all your mind. This is the first and most important commandment. To love the Lord your God with all your heart, soul, and mind. Now, I don't know about you, but it's pretty tough to love somebody that you don't know. It's pretty tough to love somebody that you don't know. You can assume you might love somebody. You ever done that on TV? You saw somebody and you're like, eh, yeah, I think I'd really like that person. I think I'd really, you know, enjoy that person's company. You know? But you don't know because you don't really know them. You know? And so I've always wondered what it must have been like for the Israelites to hear this. This was taken from Deuteronomy chapter 6. It's called the Shema or Shema, I don't know exactly how you say it. Um, but it was the, 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 the foundational teaching for the home in, in, in the Old Testament. And that's where Jesus grabs this from. And I always wondered about that. Like, because they saw God as this overwhelming, consuming fire that came down. And this pillar of, uh, uh, that was a cloud by day and fire by night and, and this cloud led them and they saw the, the thunders and the earthquakes and everything that came with Mount Sinai and I always thought man it would be hard to, to love God it would be more like I'm scared to death of him you know that's how I kind of feel about it but then Jesus comes along and changes everything Jesus comes along and changes everything Jesus came and he lived and he's the one speaking here and he's saying, hey, love the Lord your God with all your heart and all your soul and all your mind. And, and, and in the parallel passage in Mark chapter 4, or excuse me, Mark chapter 12, he says, all your strength, with everything that you are, love God. Now, how can we do that? And I think this is very important for the next part of the commandment that we get. Here's the thing. Paul said this. After Jesus had died on the cross and rose again the third day for our sins, to pay for our sins so that we could be with Him forever and be in His presence for all of eternity, Paul says this when he's talking about the love of God. He says, we love God. He said this, because He first loved us. And then later on he says, when he's talking about what motivates us, he says the love of God compels us. The love of God compels us. So if you think about that, why, what makes it so easy from our perspective 
to grasp this concept of loving God with, with, with all that we are is because we know and we read and we see and we're blown away by the fact that, that Jesus Christ came down. He was the fullness of the Godhead bodily. He went to the cross and died for us. And, and, and Why? Because He loved each and every one of us. You know, the guy on there was right. We're all uniquely made. All of us. And all of us kind of look at this, and we, we see our flaws, and we see the things we perceive as our flaws, and we think, if I was only like so-and-so, if I was only like so-and-so, or I was only like Steve Toomey, I'd be so much better. I'd have a lot more fun, probably. But if, if we see these things, or I was tall like Chris. I'm close. I'm only about a foot and a half shorter. So... I think I'm done growing them. Uh, and his son's even taller than him. And that annoys me really bad. But, <laughs> but at any rate, we see these flaws that we have and we think, oh man, if only, if only. No, 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 no. Listen. God not only uniquely made you and uniquely had you raised in a particular culture that you were raised in with the particular mindset that you have so that you can think in your own way. He created you perfectly in the way that He created you. There's no shame in that. And here's the amazing thing. Hey, buddy. How you doing? And uh, here's the amazing thing is that He loves you right where you're at. Just like He made you. And here's the other thing. He's not saying, I love you if you can finally look like or be like or act like or think like so and so. He says, no, no, no. What the cross shows us is God loves you right where you are, exactly as you are, perfectly. And you can rest and, 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 and take solace in and, and be okay with you as the person that you are. Isn't that great? And he can, you can find your identity not in the things that you think you need to be or the things that you think that, that you need to strive for. But you can find your identity outside of yourself. You can find your identity in Christ Jesus. Knowing that He fully and completely loves you right where you are. And we're all unique, aren't we? I mean, some are more unique than others, no doubt. But we're all unique. All of us are made specifically. And I think... When he carries on to this other half, this is so important to understand that not only are we need to love God, but we're loved by God. And that's the way that we are, are compelled to love him. Because he first loved us. And then he says this. And the second is like it. Love your neighbor as you love yourself. Everything that is written in the law and the prophets is based on these two commandments. So love your neighbor. Who is your neighbor? Who's your neighbor? It's pretty much anybody that you come in contact with in the flow of your life. So we're each other's neighbors, aren't right. we? And this is the crazy part. The first part he says, love the Lord your God with all your heart, mind, soul, and strength. And we know we can do that because we've been loved by God. So with everything that we are, we're to love God. Every part of us, we're to love and value God preeminently. That's the first thing. And the truth is, without that, without realizing that we're loved, it's really hard to love others properly. Does that make sense? Without realizing that, that, that we are... Are, are, can be confident and we can be uh, secure in the fact that, that, that we're loved in Christ, it, it becomes very difficult to, to love others as we love ourselves if we don't value ourselves. You know, there's a lot of, there, there's, there's a lot of people probably in here today that, that you don't see yourself as valuable. You don't see yourself as very lovely. Why? Because you know yourself. You know yourself, and you know what you're capable of, and you know what you've done, and you know what ha, ha, you, you know the bad stuff about you, right? And that can be an ugly place. And a lot of times we have a past that just beats us up. 
We've done things in our past that we just can't seem to get over. And we think, well, nobody could really love me if they really knew who I was. If they really, really knew what I was capable of or knew what I thought or all of that. But Jesus changes every bit of that. Because what Jesus does, He came down, He tells us and shows us on the cross how much He loves us so that we understand that all of that, Jesus knows you completely and He still loves you and values you. Therefore, you can value yourself and your life knowing that Christ has valued you. You see what I'm saying? That's important. Because in this one, love your neighbor as you love yourself. If you don't love yourself, you're not going to have a very good frame of reference. Now what do I mean love yourself? Do you value who you are as a human being in Christ Jesus? Not saying that you look in the mirror and you're like, oh man, that's, that's pretty lovable. I mean, let's be honest. I mean, I feel like that sometimes. But then my wife reminds me. No, I'm just kidding. I mean, you are gorgeous. I mean, absolutely drop that. But that's my wife up here, by the way. And uh, I, I married up. So it was, it was, it was good for me. Bad, bad, terrible for her, but good for me. Uh, but, but back then you didn't know I could grow this killer beard, right? So it kind of balanced. All right, so anyway. If you got to, to, to love yourself means that you value who you are in Christ Jesus. You value the person that God made you to be. We have an epidemic in this country of people uh, that, that don't value themselves and see no value in them and, and get to the darkest places and decide to, 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 to in some cases, uh, just do terrible things because they don't value themselves. Listen, you may have a past. You may have done something. But the cross is bigger. The, the grace of the cross is bigger than your ability to sin. It overcomes where sin abounds, grace much more abounds. You are valuable not because of, of, of the things you've accomplished. You're valuable because of who values you. The one who created the entire universe values you, came down, died on the cross to love you and care for you and value you. And when we realize that, we can look past our flaws and realize, you know what? There's value in who I am, not because of, of, of who I can make myself be, but because of who Jesus created me to be and His love for me. And when we value ourselves, it makes it that much easier to value others because we see Christ not only in us, but we see Christ in them. And we realize they have the spark of life, the Imago Dei. And we can look, and it says this, Love your neighbor as you love yourself. You know, sometimes we don't take very good care of ourselves. We don't take very, we indulge ourselves. We do, we, we, we hurt ourselves. We, we do think, listen, we need to value who we are and take care of us and take care. You know, this body that we have is important. This body that we only have one of them. You know, I've tried to double mine up here lately, but we really only have one. You know? And the truth is, I realized recently that I needed to do something about that. And, and so I'm trying. I'm trying to take care of this body. Not so, you know, I heard they, they asked a boxer one time what he wanted to be. I forget who it was, but they asked him what he wanted to be remembered for. And he said, the world's oldest human. And, you know, <laughs> I'm not, we don't take care of ourselves and, and take care of this body so we can live a long time. We, we, we do and value what God has created so that we can adequately, and in and, 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 and whatever way He would have us do, show Him through us. And so, value yourselves because you're valued. And when we do that, what we do, Jesus says, love your neighbor as you love yourself. Value, place a high regard to the, those around you and take care of them and love them just like you value yourself. You know, as you would take care of yourself and make sure you're taken care of and try to value your body and try to put the right things in it and try to try to get the right exercise and try to try to get the right amount of happiness and try to do all those things. Do that for those around us because just as you're valuable because of what Christ has done, so is everybody around you. The ones that are easy to love and the ones that are difficult to love. How many of you know somebody that's difficult to love? 
How many of you can point to them right now? No. <laughs> listen, listen. Jesus says, love the Lord your God with all your heart, mind, soul, and strength. And we can get a firm grasp of that because of how much we're loved. And then the second thing he says is to love others. You know why we're made, and he makes this point in the next video, which you're not going to get to see. But do you know why we're made? We're made to love God and to love each other. And there's nothing more beautiful than the self-sacrificing love of Jesus that we get to see and then we get to emulate as the Holy Spirit leads and guides us and we, we realize that we're taken care of forever. So we don't have to do anything to, to, to gain or earn eternal life that's already been given to us. You know what the beautiful thing about that is? Is it frees us to sacrificially and selflessly love those around us. And there's nothing more beautiful than the expression of Christ loving us flowing through us to others so that others around us can get a glimpse of Christ's love through those who follow Christ. Amen? Listen, we're made to love God and we're made to love others. Realize that you're uniquely made. That it's okay to be you. Because God values you so much that He sent His only begotten Son that whoever believes in Him shall not perish but have everlasting life. And you can take that and you can take that power of that love and you can be filled with the Holy Spirit and you can go out and you can say, God, just guide me and lead me and help me to love like you. And we can reach out and we can love others and give of our lives and give of ourselves and we can see that love flow through us. Isn't that awesome? That's the great commandment. That's the whole thing. That's the crux of the matter is loving God and loving each other. And what a beautiful what a beautiful thing it is when that is expressed. Amen? So what we're going to do, what we're going to do is our artists finish up here. And we're going to let them keep going. Because it looks like there are works of art going on back here. And it's these unique expressions. And this is such a good example of this that I wish I would have come up with, but I didn't. Yeah, I did. Alright, so. No, I didn't. I okayed it, though. I was okay with it. This is such a be beautiful expression of this. You know why? Because when you paint like this, it's, it's a unique expression coming from a unique person. That's why I love art. I love art because I love that. I love to see some. I don't really like art that, that is like, that is, I like, I like personal expressions in art. I like it when someone uniquely does it, and that's what they're doing. And so it's such a good example of how we're uniquely made and uniquely loved and express that love in unique ways. And so while they're finishing that up, we're going to take communion. We've got two tables here and two tables in the back. This is what we call family-style communion. And in the, in the balcony, you got to stay put. You're not allowed to have family-style communion. It's, it's too chaotic up there. By the way, there's a lot of people here today. That's great. Great. The, uh, so what we're going to do on the downstairs is this. Everybody's going to get up and go to one of these tables. And you're going to get you the elements, which is a, a little thing of juice and a little piece of bread. And you're going to take them back to your seats and you're going to be with your families. And if you want, you can be with three or four families. If you need to be alone, be alone. But, but, but we ask that you, you, you just get together with somebody if it's possible. And get together with somebody and think about this. Think about Express verbally what it means to be loved by God and what it means to love others well, as they finish up. We're going to pray here in just a minute. And then we're going to ask that you partake in communion. And again, the four tables back here, you just get up and go. If you need communion brought to you, you can sit and raise your hand and I'll make sure it gets to you, okay? So in a minute, we're going to pray. And we're going to do that. So let's pray now. Dearly Father God, we thank you for loving us. God, thank you for the cross. Thank you for that horrible, horrible, horrible place that represents something so beautiful. Jesus, you are willing to come down and die on the cross for us. And God, as we celebrate with communion, as the bread represents your broken body and the juice represents your shed blood, 
God, that we take in that, 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 that we, we, we physically take in those elements representing the fact that we've said yes to you. And that we believe that you died on the cross for our sins, that you rose again the third day. God, as we partake in communion today, remind us afresh and anew as we communicate with one another how wonderful it is to be loved by you and explore different ways that we can better love each other. So God, help us as we partake. Speak to us and help us, guide us and lead us in your precious name. Amen. You may partake in communion.